Yo, yo, welcome to PTA Sports. I am your host, Pest the Analyst, and today we're going to take a look at our offensive skill position players. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it, all right, because I got a lot of people that I'm going to cover. Um, let's start with our quarterbacks, all right? So uh, we got the obvious starter, Daniel Jones, the savior that fell from the sky to deliver us from evil, uh, according to Fist Vegas. I rock with it. Uh, we also have Colt McCoy. We got Alex, what the hell am I doing on this roster still, Tanny, and uh, Cookus. I don't even know who Cookus is, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, listen, uh, right now, right, four quarterbacks on, on the roster, uh, two of those quarterbacks are camp bodies. Which two? I don't know. Um, I, I just, I don't necessarily know if we're going to carry three uh, quarterbacks. We, we may, right? We may. And if we do, it's, it's Daniel Jones, it's McCoy, it's Tanny. All right. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't really see us carrying more than three. I really think we're going to probably carry two. Uh, but I, I, I don't know, man. That's just depends on the way that the coaching staff feels, you know, do they, do they have a backup that, that they can count on? That's not going to get hurt. Uh, you know, if, if that backup needs to come in and cover, you know, four or five, six games, I hope not. Uh, you know, as Giants fans, right, we've been real spoiled. We've been real, real spoiled because uh, for 16, 16 years, we had a guy that we knew he was going to play. Now, Daniel Jones has already missed more games in one season than Eli Manning missed in his entire career. So we don't have a guy that's not injury prone. Now that's not to say that Daniel Jones can't uh, play through injury. That's not to say that uh, if, you know, the season's on the line and uh, and DJ tweaks his ankle a little bit that he won't tape that son bitch up and go hit the field. Uh, I'm just saying like, do we really need three? I personally don't think so. If I'm gonna keep two, it's gonna be Daniel Jones, it's gonna be Colt McCoy. All right. Um, I really don't know why Alex Tanny is still on this roster. Uh, I'm not sure what the thought process uh, of him being there is. Uh, in the past, he was there to help uh, be kind of a coach on the sidelines. But our current head coach don't believe in players being coaches. So what the hell are you doing here, Alex Tanny? I don't know. Being a camp body. All right. We're going to move on. Um, I'm going to talk about the biggest group of uh, skill position players. Uh and, and man, I tell you what, when I was uh, looking it up, uh, just to kind of get a feel for, for who was all there and you know to list them out, I was actually really surprised that we currently have 13 wide receivers uh, on the roster. Man, that's a whole lot of damn wide receivers. I, I didn't even realize that we had so many. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through them all, all right? Uh, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, Cody Core, Corey Coleman, Damari Scott, Derek uh, Willen, uh, Reggie White Jr., Alex Backman, uh, Ryzen John, David Sills, Benjamin Victor, and Austin Mack. Um, John, Victor, and Mack are, are guys that we uh, that we signed. They were uh, undrafted free agents. Um, I've heard a lot of talks about Benjamin Victor specifically. Um, and uh, hey, I mean, you know, we we gonna see, we gonna see if if, if any of these uh, undrafted players stick, man. Uh, true Giants fans know that one of our best slot guys was an undrafted free agent uh, by the name of Victor Cruz. So hey, uh, talent can be found in undrafted free agents. Um, when I look at this entire uh, wide receiver room, right, uh, I feel like we missing something. Just being being honest, I'm gonna be completely honest. I I feel like I feel like we missing something. All right. Uh, uh, I like Darius Slayton. Y'all know I rock with Darius Slayton heavy. All right. Uh, Sterling Shepard is a beast. People be sleeping on him, but yo, he's a beast. He's a great uh, blocking wide receiver, and and he's a, a great slot guy. He catching everything. All right. He, he's a beast. And then Golden Tate. I mean. Here, here's the thing about Golden Tate, man. I really respect Golden Tate's game. I really respect what Golden Tate brings to the table. I think Golden Tate still got a little bit of juice left up in him. But uh, I mean, like, is this is this our our number one? I don't think so. 
Uh, I hope Slayton is the number one. But if Slayton is the number one, is Golden Tate even the number two? Like, like on a, on a different roster, would Golden Tate be a number two? I don't think so. I think Golden Tate would be a slot guy or he'd be a rotation guy at this point. Uh, and it's unfortunate that right now we're, we're, we're stuck with him potentially being our number two. And saying stuck with him is really like not the word I want to use, but for lack of a better term, like we're stuck with him right now. Like we paid him a bunch of money, he gonna be here. Um, uh, uh, Corey Coleman, man, Corey Coleman is a guy that I really hoped would, uh, you know, kind of revitalize his career with the Giants. Uh, as it stands, he hasn't. Um, he is damn good in kick return, though. So he, he could potentially be one of our kick returners, maybe be one of our punt returners. Uh, but, like, nothing nothing's really come come of him, all right? Um, and then, like, some of these other names, man, like the Damari Scotts of the world, the Reggie White Juniors of the world. Like, man, I, I don't know, man. Like, these, these guys are not... These are not starters. These are depth pieces. These are guys that can come in for one or two downs, catch a ball, and then go back to the sideline, sip some Gatorade. Like, as I said, man, I just feel like there's something missing from this wide receiver room, man. And 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 like, uh, I don't feel I don't feel super confident about the wide receiver room, man. I, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna come here and be a homer and say that all of our players are beasts. Our wide receiver room still needs a little bit of something, something, and I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it right now. But what I'm hoping is is that one of these undra uh, undrafted free agents, you know, pull a, pull a Darius Slayton and come out of nowhere and beast mode during the season, and we're like, oh, holy snap, yo, we we got a guy. So we gonna see, all right. But as it stands, we got a lot of bodies, right, to 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 go out there. Throughout training camp, however the hell that's going to happen, preseason, if that happens, we, we, we got guys here that we can say, hey, let's see what these guys got. So we're going we gonna to figure that out. Okay, moving on to uh, the tight end position, all right? Uh, as it stands right now, we got six tight ends, all right? We got Evan Ingram, Levine Tololo, uh, that's, maybe that's how you say it, Eric Tomlinson, Garrett Dickerson, Caden Smith, and Kyle McCorre, who's another one of those uh, undrafted free agents that we picked up. Okay, check it out. Um, so we just picked up Evan Ingram's fifth year option, which means that we want this dude, okay? Uh, and, and cool, like cool. I don't got no problems with Evan Ingram. The only problem that I have of, of Evan Ingram is, is since he's been in a league, he's been kind of the Mr. Glass of the Giants. Like this dude cannot play a full season. When he's playing, he's effective. He's a game changer when he's on the field, man. He's a mismatched nightmare. Like you, you, you can barely cover this dude with a linebacker or a safety. Like he's hard to cover. So if this dude's on the field and he's playing, then I'm good. I'm all the way good if Ingram is on the field and he's playing. But that's the question, bro. Can you just last a whole season? Can you just give us an entire season without you being hurt? Okay. And 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 if it's not a full season, can it just be one game that you miss because you? You know, you, you, you tweak something, you pull something, you know, like, can, can, just, can we just get one season out of you where you play the vast majority of games, please? I'm just saying. Now, um, I've heard a lot of good things about uh, to Toy Lolo. I, I hope that's how you say his name. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong and you hear this. I, I don't know if you will, but uh, but I, I hear some good things about him. All right. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what, what he brings to the table. Um Caden Smith, man. Caden Smith is a guy that I that I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing what what he can do. Uh, um, you know, hey, keeping it real. Like Caden Smith got some skills. All right, is he a number one tight end? No, but he got some skills. He can come in there and he can give us a little something, something here and there. Uh, you know, he he he's got he's got skills. Um, yo, Garrett Dickerson. All right, I'm gonna talk about Garrett Dickerson real quick for a second, man, because um, yo, Garrett Dickerson kind of kind of lets me down man because i was real high on garrett dickerson all right i was super high on garrett dickerson as a player um tall big all right decent catch radius um he he, he was somebody that i thought like yo man this this guy could be uh this guy could be a sleeper and he kind of hasn't been and uh i mean i i'm not i'm not going like <laughs> i'm not going to say that i'm not rooting for for garrett dickerson 
Uh, I am, man. I hope that I hope that you know these last couple of seasons, you know, you've perfected your game, you've gotten better, and and you're able to come in and, and actually play, man. Because like I, like I said, I was real high on Garrett Dickerson, and uh, I've just been let down by this dude. <laughs> I just I just have been. Um, okay, let's uh, let's go on ahead and uh, look at our, our our running back room. Okay, so as it stands, we got five uh, regular running backs and two fullbacks. All right, uh, our running back room consists of Saquon Barkley. Deion Lewis, Jonathan Hilleman, uh, uh, Javon Leak, and Sandro Platzgummer. Those, those are the, those are like the halfbacks. And then we got Elijah Penny and George Ashton as our fullbacks. Okay, listen, I don't really got to say a whole lot about Saquon Barkley. Everybody knows that Saquon Barkley is a beast. Everyone knows that we are building this team around Saquon Barkley. And we should, okay? Because Saquon Barkley is the kind of guy that you need to have as the face of your franchise, okay? Just really quickly, all right, I saw that Saquon Barkley did an interview with Good Morning Football. He was asked uh, how, what, it, what his thoughts was on this season, and his response was, this was my favorite season. What? What do you mean, Saquon? How is your favorite season? He said it was his favorite season because he was injured. He had a, a game where he got one rushing yard. He had to like work out, uh, work, you know, work out, rehab, get better, come back, grind through it, fight, scratch, tooth and nail, and it was just a difficult ass season for him. And and you know, and he was still able to persevere. He was still able to come back. He was still able to play. And and like, yo, an answer like that lets you know the character of a person, okay? Saquon Barkley is a dude that wants to work hard. He wants to be the best and he wants to fight through adversity. And when he fights through adversity and he and he's successful despite the adversity, he looks back and he's like, yeah, I earned it. And, and I can dig it, all right? Right. Um, Deion Lewis, man. Deion Lewis is, is uh, obviously he's a backup, <laughs> like Saquon's a starter. But uh, but Deion Lewis is, is a guy that uh, you know he he had a pretty good he had a pretty good season with the Titans last year, backing up Derrick Henry. Um, I think he's a guy that can come in here and, and you know give some quality snaps to spell Barkley. Uh, so I, I don't hate it. Okay, I don't hate it at all. Um, Man, why do I feel like why do I feel like I'm missing somebody? Why do I feel like I'm missing a running back? Am I missing a running back? I am missing a running back. Wayne Gallman. Oh my God. I, I totally forgot to mention Wayne Gallman's name. Um, listen, <laughs> that's not a slight at Wayne Gallman, right? Uh, because like I, I don't dislike Wayne Gallman. I just don't think Wayne Gallman is special. Okay? I just don't. Um, like, I don't think Wayne Gallman is going to be here with the Giants long term. I am not even attached to him, like, at all. But uh, my apologies for forgetting Wayne Gallman. I'm sorry. That's six six running backs, man. I, 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 I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but, uh, yeah, Wayne, Wayne Gallman. Like, we're we going to see. We're going to see about Wayne Gallman. Like, he's got talent. He's got talent, but I just... <sighs> He's like he's an average he's an average running back right now. Like that's all I've seen from Wayne Garman is him being an average running back. He could prove me wrong and he could have a monster season. Maybe. And if he does, cool, great. You know, I, I'm not I'm not gonna be mad about that. Um Jonathan Hilleman. Okay. Um I'ma tell y'all right now, uh, and I hope that somehow like someone gets this to to uh Jonathan Hilleman. Maybe like Mike Too Nice from Fireside Giants, uh, you know, can can like push this in his direction since uh, you know he 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 was chilling with them during the draft or whatever. Um, I'm really, really, really rooting for Jonathan Hilleman, okay. And the reason why I'm rooting for Jonathan Jonathan Hilleman is 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 straight up bias, okay. I'm biased as hell, and I don't care. All right, and the reason the reason why I'm rooting for him is because me and him is from the same same stomping grounds. All right, Plainfield, New Jersey, PLFD stand up, and uh, his family probably knows my family. <laughs> like I wouldn't even be surprised if if you know one day I get to have some interaction with him, and it comes to find out that we know all the same people. Plainfield ain't that big, um, but like I, yo, I, I just because he's from 
on my same stomping ground, yo, I always want people from Plainfield to be successful, all right? Because that's where I grew up. That's where I cut my teeth. And I, and I know what it's like to be from Plainfield, New Jersey. I know what it's like to grow up in that town. And I know how hard it is to get the hell out of there and be successful. So I, I hope I hope that uh, Hilleman is, is, is uh, you know, is a beast for us, all right? So, so we're going to see. Um... Leak, I think that's how you say his name. He's an undrafted free agent. And then Platzengummer. Uh, Platzengummer was a, was a guy that we got through the uh, NFL International Program. I believe he's from Germany or Aust Australia. Something like that. I don't know. He's from Europe. Okay. He's from Europe. Um, I actually saw a, a, a video on Twitter uh, of him, you know, taking, taking it like 60 yards to the house. Uh, actually looked real good. And I was like, oh man, I mean, that's cool, but that's a highlight. And I don't always believe highlights, all right? Hi like, I just, I don't believe in them, all right? Um, I gotta get some, I gotta, you know, try and see if I can get my hands on some film on him and just kind of get a get a peek of, of what he looks like. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, right, this is a guy who, uh, if we practice squad him, he doesn't count against our numbers. It doesn't count against our practice squad numbers. So I won't be surprised if this dude's on the practice squad because it's a free practice squad spot for this guy. So uh, it is what it is. In terms of our fullbacks, listen, um, I'm not really a fullback guy, okay? I'm not. I'm an H-back guy. I believe in the H-back. Um, for those who don't know, the H-back is, is kind of more of a, it's more like a tight end, right? Uh, you know, you, you take whoever is like your best blocking tight end and you put his ass there as the fullback um you know and then that way you know he he can block he can block for your running back you know put some holes but hopefully since he's a tight end he has the ability to catch a little bit and you can hit him in the flats or you can hit him on like an angle route or something like that you know because he he's kind of a route runner as well um but i really don't i really don't believe in in the fullback position right I don't believe in in giving up a roster spot for a guy whose job it is to just block, like block in the backfield. There's a lot of people on the roster that can do that. Um, that's not a slight at who we have. That's just my opinion on the fullback position. Like, <laughs> and maybe my opinion should be different because when I was a kid, I was a fullback for my cousin. You know, because he was running back, I was a fullback, and I used to smash helmets, you know, to try to clear the way for him to, to haul ass down the field. But uh, like I said, it's, it's not a slight. Um, as it stands right now, Elijah Penny and uh, George Ashton. Um, listen, I, I think that I think that Penny, if we're gonna keep uh, a true fullback, it's gonna be Penny. It's gonna be Elijah Penny. Um, he played a little bit of running back for us last year. That didn't really go so well. Like he didn't do that great of a job at it. But he's not a running back, so it is what it is. Um, but uh, I, I don't know, man. If we're gonna keep one of these guys, then you're gonna keep Penny because Penny's been here. Um, I think Penny's got got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of, of talent at the fullback position. I'm not gonna discredit his talent. I just again, I don't believe in using a roster spot on, on a fullback when I could take you know if i got three tight ends i can use one of those tight ends as my fullback and and go from there but hey that's my opinion okay i don't again i don't know what these coaches are thinking okay so um overall right looking at our uh, skill positions man um it's mostly because of the wide receiver room like yo something's missing something something's missing here uh, we got a lot of offensive skill position players um, we've got a lot of talent here, right? We do have legitimate talent, all right? Uh, uh, when, when, you, when you think about having uh, Golden Tate, Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, uh, um, uh, Evan Ingram, Saquon Barkley on the field with Daniel Jones throwing or, or handing off to, to Barkley throwing to, you know, any of those people that I named, like, yo, we, we, got, we, we got some potential there. There is potential there, right? But I just... There's something missing here, man. <laughs> it is, it is. There's not enough seasoning. There's not enough seasoning in this potato salad, Cameron. Like I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. But uh, I mean, like overall, right? I feel, I feel good. For the most part, I feel good with what we have here. I do. Um, I think that we could, you know, actually. If we combine this with our offensive line, which I just did a video on that, um, I, I think that we have the, the ability to move the ball, right? Move the chains. 
put points up on the board? I think we can. I really do. Uh, uh, I have confidence that that this offense will be able to to uh, work well. I, I do have have the confidence that this offense can work well. But I don't see this being like a, a top 10, top 15 uh, offense. Okay? I don't. I, I see this being an average to maybe even below average offense this season. Just because like I just... On paper, sure, I guess it looks sexy, but like I just I don't know how how all these pieces are gonna work. Um, if we can keep Daniel Jones uh, uh, upright, if we can keep him from fumbling, um, you know, if we can get the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker, if we can, you know, uh, uh, get some run blocking going, open up some holes for Saquon, then yeah, man, we'll be fine. We'll be 100% fine. Um, but I just. I can't look at this roster right now on paper and say like, yo, this is getting ready to be a top 15 roster. I can't. If it happens and I'm wrong, great. Fantastic if I'm wrong. But uh, that that's just my opinion on these, on these skill position players. All right. Relatively good. Right. Lots of good pieces. Couple of sexy, sexy players up in there in terms of their abilities. But it doesn't look like it's going to be like the, the best thing since sliced bread. That's just what it is. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna start working on my uh, my defensive skill position players, and not necessarily skill position, right? But just the the opposite uh, side of the ball. Uh, we'll take a look at the safeties, cornerbacks, uh, linebackers. All right, and then uh, I think I'm also gonna do. Uh, I think I'm also gonna do a little quick special teams video, right? Special teams isn't that big. But uh, maybe I'll do a little special teams video, too, because i got a couple of opinions about special teams. Uh, but with all that said, man, I appreciate y'all coming and listening to me talk for a little bit. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hope everybody is safe, healthy, and wash your hands. And I'll get up with you guys later. Deuces.